the last section actually we have discussed about like uh, so what are the required thing or the data science uh, platform and what are the roles uh, so we are working on the data science uh, projects right and we had just a quick look up on uh, with respect to the thing. so as i mentioned earlier like the data science project uh, data science project this is across all domain all industries basically so because the recent days each and every uh, organization it could be manufacturing it could be a consumer goods or it could be like a life uh, life science or healthcare or finance whatever it is and they are looking uh, not only for their uh, software or application so they are they are looking specifically for their data so that the data it now plays a very important vital role uh, um, the recent days so that's the reason actually it's become what it's a major role in each and every industries right so last class we have discussed about like the transportation how the uber they have built up the application and uh, uh, to, to to tracking their system um, so where the where exactly the vehicle it's it's uh, it located there something like that so known example right so hope you guys are like even you come across this experience like when when you are booking the cab or when you are traveling the cab or the cab so you can find out like where you are located then obviously along with uh, your, uh, even you are traveling then your your map also showing that where you are located and where is the uh, the uh, what is that the traffic very huge traffic or um, normal traffic traffic something all the details informations we pull out and will showing in through the your small app okay that is actually the transportation and you and even we discuss about like healthcare industry perspective last uh, yesterday we discuss about like uh, how they are planning to have the healthcare perspective as well okay that is a number two one the same way we have this e-commerce and uh, e-commerce yes obviously we have an analyzed so many things the recommendation system uh, for example like um, the very first class we had discussed about recommendation system in flipkart amazon so many places right at manufacturing obviously there are so many things like in already they had some capturing the data and doing all their um, what is that uh, that um, the overall sales everything but by using all those data they are planning to predict the upcoming sales or up upcoming orders how much market value everything so they can use that so i wanted to go into the detail of each and every line item so that we need so many things to cover so just we am jumping into the uh, the other one that's of banking so banking domain and finance right the, the bottom most of the two things like in the slide so the the banking and the finance the both are really very very important and um what is that i would say i would say it's like a, a very important so very important domain when you talk about uh, uh what is that uh, the, the data science applications because each and every data point based on that we can have that see for example um the customer segmentation so customer segmentation for finance uh, which is mainly used to find out as we discussed earlier i think uh, you can remember right the scatter uh, plot by using the scatter plot simple example not directly so you cannot directly connect with what i'm i'm, I'm giving examples here so scarce uh, customer segmentation for example some set of people they are looking for personal loan some people are looking for a home loan and some people are looking for like some education or something like that some group of set of people so to identify all those analysis and based on that so the banking and financial team what they will plan they will then they enhance that business so based on the demand so they will take the survey or they will take the earlier um, uh, uh, the data point for example in specific area uh, let's say once one the place which is nearby we have a very great university right so the people are looking um, for some education loan in the specific area means so most of the people that they go for um, the nearby bank to that university for the banking loan or easy access to get the loan for uh, their higher studies whatever it is so so those kind of things actually they need to identify yes we have a population obviously they have a list of people and those are like planning to go for their higher education or else they going for some other uh, the loan based any other education means they'll they'll figure out something like how much people they're potentially 
they're looking for what is that um, education loan so all those things so they the, the, by using the financial finance environment finance domain so they'll find out the seg customer segment presentation so they will evaluate that okay the set of people like the people more than 21 22 years they have done with their uh, uh, bachelor degree and they are planning go for higher degree okay so there might be some survey so based on that what they will predict this set of people they are planning to go for higher studies so that we can announce the what is that so we can announce the the specific set of um, uh, finance support for the uh, education loan and same way to enhance the business loan same way and same time for uh, i would say like uh, uh, what is that um, world trip loan for example during the summer vacation or else any festival vacation so what they will plan okay some these set of people they're planning to go travel uh, around the world like they're planning for uh, um, europe trip or they're planning for us trip or they're planning for any other um, um, south asia or asia trip so, so they will find out that data point and they will announce based on the customer pulse they'll announce the the finance availability for the each customer so all those things they are built using the what is that by using data uh, data science and algorithm basic things okay the same way so the same way for banking as well so the fault detection and credit risk modeling so they the credit risk modeling also find out like for example if i applied for a credit card so what they will do they'll go and check my all complete my um, transaction details and they'll find out is there any um, i have did any like uh, 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 i did any any uh, earlier i had any other uh, what is that uh, uh, credit cards and i have paved that the credit uh, credit details like credits like back to the bank on time or else like is there any uh, cheating so they will they'll find out all the analysis and they will find out this specific uh, customer eligible for credit risk or not for example they will predict that modeling then based on that they will get ready with the data and then if i'm applying for that so they will find out the my credit card system detecting system will give the detail about just a number called sr no but that specific sr no will be like the outcome of the individual um, the individual customers the detail analysis of the entire transaction so far what he's made across the as so many years so based on that they will give the credit card credit uh, credit risk modeling system the same way customer life uh, lifetime values very, very similar to giving offer to the customer what kind of benefits they can give ultimately they will they'll enhance the customer to bring the money to the bank and put that so those kind of algorithms those those kind of like what is that um, um, system build by using data science so you can ask me the question sir actually already we have some set of applications existing in all domain the what are the domain we are displaying over here it could be healthcare or transportation finance so what those applications be yes of course all applications are going to be existing still it's required and they will do all the enhancement and top of that what are the data they are received from the customer for example if i'm going to the bank i'm creating my account and i started deposit some amount amount and withdrawing some amount so over the period i am doing all the transaction so they want to do the analysis on my transaction so based on that they want to give any value added to my uh, my, my contribution my savings in bank so they want to do something on top of that that's very very important right so in that perspective so the banking and finance team the combinedly work they'll give a suggestion you can go for this kind of of a bank loan like a personal loan or a vehicle loan whatever it is so all those things is pertaining with your the the first step like the application perspective so those all these things they are captured and we'll go ahead on this okay so that's the reason actually we're bringing up the the data science application on top of the existing normal application already which is running on the uh, individual uh, domain okay that's we have to make sure about uh, on this because see for example um, if you're going for uh, if you're going and depositing some amount in icic bank or hdbc everything so what they will do they will get your money they'll deposit your account then they'll give you some challan whatever it is so that's it simple 
in SBA bank and all, if you go manually, they'll, they'll feed the data, then that's it. So you can get the, um, uh, the transaction detail, everything. You take the printout on your um, account book, everything. But if you look at like uh, it's another uh, private bank, they never use all those, um, uh, what is a transaction detail, notebook, bank book, they used to say, right? But we don't have. So everything's automated and everything's like online. And nowadays, actually, even they're going to restrict the like, digital transformation, right? So they're not, not at all using any money transaction, cash transaction. Everything's on online. So this is on, on top of that. What are the features we can enhance? What are the features they can provide to the customer? For though all those things, they need to analyze the, the data by using data science application and their modeling. Okay, these are the very high level things. So probably if you're planning to do any project, um, connecting with your uh, the uh, electronics and uh, ECE perspective and uh, collecting the data and doing analysis. Yes, very well you can do that. So this is the best classic examples for the normal domain. What so far will existing. And uh, this is the second, the another um, set of application I have put for just for, for clear understanding. Again, nothing major changes. So very things very similar to that. So let's say here the marketing, churn, upselling, cross-selling, and predicting lifetime value of the customer. And let's say if it's a social media, so you can find the sentiment analysis and the digital marketing. And the same way here, the automation, space self-driving cars and uh, pilotless aircraft and then the same way for here the uh, fraud and risk reduction credit and insurance claim prediction healthcare we are discussed and sales so offering the discount offer and demand forecasting so this are like the name itself like uh, giving the uh, clear indication that what exactly the application will do right sir yeah yes sir so you want to share anything on this specific uh, data sets application based on your understanding and knowledge? Probably you made it come across so many websites on topics and uh, blogs, everything, right? Yes, sir. So I think, sir, like uh, in uh, yeah. uh, banks and all that, when they are giving you the loan mm -hmm. um, during that time, uh, that they would be uh, thinking, um, uh, they would be adjusting the, uh, how to say that, how much uh, income a person is uh, getting each month based on them they will give the related plans with regarding to that plans only to those person they will not give the lower one plans they will give only the if the person is uh, getting a high salary they will give the plans which are means good for him not the lower plans so exactly. i think in that case the data science applications is there means for giving the offers or like that or for giving the loans to the people in that mm. case i think it is useful perfect 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 good so do you have any, any other uh, idea like so do you have any idea about like sentiment analysis? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So in, so far we have discussed about like uh, uh, what is the data science? What are the all those things? Now we want to look at it in uh, uh, what is that, that that where exactly the data science in uh, uh, enterprises architecture. So first of all guys like try to understand what is the enterprise architecture. Your enterprise architecture means so if I have one industry, let's like, uh, like I have a retail industry, right? So in the retail industry, I might have so many applications in my, um, for my organization. It could be like inventory, it could be like a sales, or it could be like um, uh, marketing, or it could be like uh, my employee details, or it could be my customer details. So there might be so many application which is interconnected and they want to centralized and holistic view. I want to understand what exactly the overall picture of my um, my IT division. So in that case, the people used to say the enterprises architecture and there might be one person who's sitting on top of that enterprise architecture. The name itself is the enterprise architecture architect. So he only the person to orchestrating entire application, how it's supposed to run he may not know the individual piece of work but very high level he understood what exactly the data flowing around around the my industry my industry is my 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 my, my retail my retail industry let's say um, so here we have uh, uh, there are so many legends like in uh, retail industries like uh, 
um, uh, Premark, and then uh, we have Matland, and we have uh, uh, MNDS. So many people are there. So each and every people they have used to the every organization they have the set of applications. So here this is a holistic view of that. Uh, um, uh, so the, uh, the the overall uh, view of the architecture, right? Just high level, but the architecture perspective. So you can see the different data flow, but it's just easy understandable. Okay, so the logical path for source to making a decision for the enterprises because actually each and every movement, as I mentioned earlier, right? So um, as Amulya said, based on the uh, based on the uh, the specific the customer. Um, the income and the saving capacity. So the bank uh, is providing the loan and they're planning to give any other uh, any other opportunity to give a credit uh, credit uh, um, opportunities or else like any loan perspective. So they will decide and take a decision and take it forward because they want to retain the customer. The same way, the all the application look at who are here, the data source, the enterprises business application, social media source sensor would uh, iot and the syndicate uh, data open source platform cloud platform a big data platform so these are the all the data their application might be um, mounted on these spaces and the data is coming out from all those data source so these are all the small small items right probably like you're going forward you, you could familiar with all those even most of the things you know now even uh, now itself for example sap and salesforce and twitter and right and big data what we discussed earlier so the data which is arrived from different sources so they used to apply for applied data engineering they have a space and applied data science and then decision science and big decision big business decision okay so based on the that the data part they will do the all the analysis then they'll try to uh, how and where when they can enhance the their business opportunities basically all this data nowadays they playing a very vital role for example as i mentioned uh, earlier if you are crossing some if you are in the mall then you are near to the very one of the, the one of the the leading um, shop let's say mnds so if you are very near to the mnds the your mobile is on and uh, your internet is like already available so what that will do the google google will capture that information then once you reach the home or even you move out of that place automatically it will start asking you what is the experience what is the experience it doesn't make sense like you are not entered into the mns but what it say it recognized you are get into the mns then it's asking for some feedback okay and same way for example um, if you are in mcdonald's or else if you're in KFC, then after purchasing or after like visiting that place, then you will come out. Is that in my, it could be sometimes it's a major restaurant. After you are visiting that place, probably you might have a, like a pop-up message saying that give the feedback. So why they're asking earlier, they used to after finishing their uh, um, uh, dinner or breakfast or lunch, the waiter used to give that feedback form. So you are to ask to fill up that. Okay. But paper mode. But I'm not sure how many we have filled that and correctly or like in full detail but when the pop-up comes on your mobile automatically we started giving the details sometimes some people give that mostly but okay so if you're giving all, all those details they'll capture the information and they'll started doing all the business enhancement okay so that's the reason i said each and every moment of the the human being nowadays if you are the person is having the mobile right so everyone has the mobile nowadays right even if it is the eight years old kid or like 80 years the old man they have the mobile so wherever they go they'll capture that information they'll give the recommendation for anything else anything right it could be any any eatable item or it could be like any clothes or any other uh, any other things like they want to make it as a business basically saying right okay so this is like a complete holistic view of like where the data science yeah, how the data things driven in our um, uh, in, uh, complete enterprise architecture flow. Okay, so I don't go into detail here. It's so many things are there. Right. So now you guys want to understand data science analogy. So data science analogy is nothing but like comparing with some available examples. I'm thought of like uh, 
show that so, so good funny video so the guy actually used to comparing the data science uh, uh, along with the the cooking right so he is to explain like what exactly what it means ingredients and how is comparing with the data and same way like uh, so what are the uh, the things like the what is that the flavor engineering and the taste and explore uh, and uh, source of file deep learning and uh, so many things are like they explained in very uh, funny way so just a thought of showing that anyway we'll jump into that then later point we can uh, we can we can i can show that okay i don't know whether it's readily available okay see so here i have the the data science analogy to finding the best route probably even you come across this analogy right so where we can apply uh, the data science as i mentioned earlier like the uber uh, cars right so that how internet is working the very high level high level uh, um, the flow i would say so for example here in a data science analogy so we have one two three four five five steps okay that's a major thing so first one is to define the what's a problem and uh, second thing we need to collect the uh, data collection with respect to this problem and we need to process the data to attain your uh, to get the solution and then uh, the next one is exploring and an analysis of the data so that we can find out what exactly our objective to achieve that uh, solution and finally so we can get out the solution here so for example here the person right you could see the first picture it shows like the person is try to um, find out the best route route to reach out his work okay so there are there are the major two um the way the path a and route a and route b okay so he is getting ready to office and same time he want to travel either the route a or route b but he found lot of issues when he is traveling uh, route a and route b right and he is going to analyze so which route it could be possible based on the um, the timing and day and, uh, and the other factors okay so what he is doing he is doing like collecting the data right i have a couple of routes route a and route b and then he is observing the surrounding and the collecting the data so during the data collection he is collecting the data exactly what is the distance and peak time of the week and then humidity and the traffic flow so when he started collecting the data there might be a number of factors which influencing um, that specific uh, analysis so basically if if you're going to like uh, uh, what is that uh, let's say for salt analysis so probably in your in your uh, um, um, 11th or 12th standards so definitely you might have like doing the salt analysis so for doing the salt analysis what you used to do basically you used to like finding the colors chart or anything else and that by the time it, it might be pertaining to different n number of more than 5 or 6 salt might be like a consolidated things you are viewing that and then you try to filter one by one and excluding that uh, whichever is not comparable with that specific salt then you exclude those testing and you you are you are your, your direction will go towards what exactly uh, the given salt could be okay that could be sodium nitrate whatever it is i forgot the name so it could be any kind of uh, the salt so it's the same way when i started doing the data collection there might be n number of the data might be arrived here right so it could be a distance because the distance might be for the route a it's going with uh, 14000 meter and uh, here the 20000 kilometer 20000 kilometers and the speed the both route a and route b this guy is going like 10 kilometers per hour and the day of the week is is took like monday and then because the most of the time is monday is going to be peak day for uh, the all the business days right the people are back to their work after their uh, weekends and then the time obviously 9 o'clock so he started uh, going to office by 9 o'clock he started from his house so it's obviously what's is 9 am so he is taking the two routes route a and route b at the same time right and the humidity it's going to be 95 so it's the morning time so humidity is very peak and then the traffic flow right dense are mild 
so there are the two things that are given the information right so now i have all this detail but i, I cannot go and analyze uh, the best route with all these details because few things is not required okay that's very very important when you are going to do the any data science data uh, data science uh, related uh, uh, <coughs> project so that the people will will give all the data like uh, last uh, yesterday we saw right uh, the database administrator the database administrator will provide what are the available data to you in your hand right and data engineer and data architect will help you guys to streamline and they will like cut short uh, the unnecessary data points and they'll give some fruitful things to you guys right even you should like if you are going to act as a data science data scientist then you have to understand hey this right specific uh, uh, data point will help us or not so all those information you have to think from your perspective anyway you have a team data architect they will modeling the data and data engineers they will do all your the required data and reasonable data then we can take it forward for example in this uh, in this analogy so in the data collection we have immunity right and in your data processing what we are doing ignoring the unnecessary observation so why we want to you know, ignore the uh, uh, ignore the unnecessary information uh, observations so let's say humidity is not at all required to predict my flow right so that that is the key here so that's right that's the reason actually they are removing that the humidity so that it becomes crunch for example if you take any other analysis sometime there might be hundreds columns are there right in real time scenario there may be 100 or 150 columns are there so you need to take all the column hope you guys are know what is a column and row right guys yes sir cool okay that's fine so if you are going to analyze any data data but uh, if i'm giving n number of columns let's say 10 column is okay fine you can you can you can easily identify what are the columns are required or not but when you going to the data science the source might be uh, it could be more than more than one as we as we explained earlier right it could be like a social media or it could be you know uh, um, data or it could be like uh, from iot whatever it is there are the data could be a huge but when you are starting doing analysis then it's the data sets given by uh, the data engineers it could it could be like more than let's say 100 columns by using the 100 columns to predicting the values or doing the analysis really really challenge but even it could be before that uh, uh, coming into your hand 100 column it could be more than 1000 columns or it could be a number of data source but our data architect and a data engineers they com combinedly they given a data sheet it's just like that in column in our uh, let's say here okay so these things like uh, that uh, your data engineers and they used to give the data in this specific set of format so even though sometimes there might be some flaws are there we need we can could we can remove all those information but for this analogy we are taking forward and we are doing analysis right so when i am doing with this one humidity is not required i am removing this and then i am going with the ignoring unnecessary thing i am taking a distance speed day of the week and day of the time and traffic flow and then after doing the data processing i am coming to the data exploration and analysis so here your part is very important you need to select the decision variable and predicting variable yes actually here the very important thing um we used to say like dependent variable and independent variable you just keep it in your mind these two way two statement across the data science and machine learning um program even if you go for ai or go for dl um, deep learning whatever it is so this very very important two things like independent variable and dependent variable okay and target variable and futures so i'll clearly explain later no problem but whenever i'm asking you guys what are the major things like for with respect to the do the analysis dependent variable and independent variable okay so you want to predict something that's going to be dependent variable independent variable means what are the available uh, variable but it required to do the analysis okay 
so for example if you're going to buy the car there might be a number of parameters that could be a um, um, speed of the car or uh, it could be like uh, the road tax for the car and the cost of the car what could, it could be anything okay so to buy the car then we have to analyze all those um, parameters or else you can say it as a futures or you can say they say like uh, what is that uh, attributes everything comes under for the decision making you are going to buy a car you want to analyze what there are various parameter so dependent variable and independent variable and it could be a target variable and predicting variable okay that's a very very important so just remember that so when you move on the classes probably i will ask you questions so that you... sorry somebody is raising question okay so here i am selecting the decision variable traffic and time and delay right so you are taking a two major variable so even though the distance distance speed day of the week day of the time traffic flow whatever it is but i am taking just a time and traffic delay so here the route 1 hour 20 minutes okay and then route b i am taking a 2 hours okay and the same way delay here it is like a 55 minutes and here also like route b is a 0 minutes right so they are doing all the traffic delay analysis over here okay don't confuse much here just to try to understand the defining the problem and then uh, here uh, here the data collection and then the data processing and exploring the data and finding the solution so end of the day is the best or the best and fastest route to go to office here is route a 2 hours 15 minutes and route b is a 2 hours so obviously we can go with the route b right so this kind of the just is a, a example just you can use those all those analogy to find out the what is that um to the best route this is just on top the by by available data we are doing that but all this detail will predict and give the detail from uh, your machine learning algorithm will give the suggestion you can take the route b right and i coming to again uber so uber or whatever it is like your google map so in the google map if you are selecting like a um, uh, your destination and you have to select your where you are you are starting right so if you are giving that information it will find out and give the very shorter route it won't give any like options basically i don't know how many of you experience that okay if you're driving then parallels like if you're driving along with someone then you might have that um, um google map so when you put that uh, the your destination the source and destination so automatically uh, the map will calculate all the details and distance and give you the best route to you guys the logic behind that it's a very simple analogy very very high level analogy this is the analogy behind that okay just try to remember that for example if you missed the route the automatically the map will recalculate uh, your destination and give the exact uh, route again to reach the place and how fast you can reach how how far from your place and uh, uh, when you can reach that specific place everything you will like predict perfectly and give the instruction probably you can uh, you have had that experience you guys are had experience on that using go google map a gps any one of you yes sir cool very good yes sir very good yeah so so the based on that uh, the, the, the begin the logic uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, what is it? okay so life cycle is a general term right how it is existing how it is evolving all those information we are covering by using what is that in our uh, data science uh, life cycle this is very important thing see if you go like if if you go and check in on on, on google so you can find so many life cycle um uh, it has like a same set of naming convention and same set of process but they may have a n number of design various things so i picked up just only the very few and understandable way to to explain you guys right so the first one right first one is like uh, uh, the business understanding right and then the data understanding 
and then the data preparation and creating the model and the evaluating the model and deploying the model this is a straightforward the life cycle so business understanding i think based on earlier experience people i think you can understand that what is the business understanding the business users and the data architect and even for um, um, uh, 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 what is that uh, analytics manager and data scientist so involved during the business understanding along with the customer right and then they want to understand what kind of data they want to use for this analysis so that they will give the instruction we need all this data to do your to resolve your problem or to identify your problem so they will give the data so that actually as we mentioned the so many uh, team members will jump into in this phase and this the data preparation so the next step is going to be data preparation this is very very important guys see for example um during your um uh campus interviews so based on your curriculum only they will you select and they they might have a questions in uh, some kind of software understanding as well okay since i also they've been part of that uh, um uh, campus uh, uh, campus interview panel so I have a good amount of experience how to evaluate how to pick up the resource right like the folks like you guys like it could be like campus interview or off campus interview whatever it is so first of all we will ask the questions from your subject right and then we started asking you guys are have really know about anything about computer right you are know about anything software so for example if any 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 uh, um campus interview uh, if you get a chance to attend that so probably they might ask questions do you know what recent uh, evolved uh, technology you know in a latest um, it division means probably you can throw the coin data science and machine learning we are learning all those things so separate paper we have so our uh, college has provided uh, uh, this specific the topic then uh, we gone through almost uh, 30 hours of uh, data science program so we understood what is data science is doing all those things by the time you've started explaining the data science life cycle so really catching things for the the interviewer right so you can impress them so, so that's what i'm telling like just the, the, take it as this specific program as like opportunity perspective job opportunity perspective is so like so okay you can consider the other subject also as well for a job opportunity but this one i'm i'm assuming like definitely 80 percentage of the uh, the companies are coming to your uh, college uh, for the campus interview it could be definitely it right so if those guys are like entering you guys they are looking for your subject experts on top of that they're looking for something what you guys are understood out of the recent technology uh, trend because the demand is very very high there are so many things are there since you guys are like uh, education like you are guys are in you're doing in college I don't want to show those slides because that is it's showing like job opportunities uh, slides and uh, what is the salary etc etc but I don't want to show all those things over here and um, uh, making what is that uh, tempting you guys to just outcome out uh, come out of from your uh, uh, your circle that's very important okay but just you can go through that you can see all those things but try to understand how you can project yourself how you can project yourself um during the interview the interviewer stuff is uh, suppose asking like well, what is data science do you have any about data science means we start speaking something like because we are going to discuss almost uh, 30 hours right so we have gone almost three to four hours so far so just consume all those 30 or 24 hours into make at least two hours as uh, a uh, snapshot from your end and during the interview 10 minutes or five minutes you've started speaking about data science i'm sure definitely you get placed because it's impression people want to understand like what exactly the the, the young mind they are thinking like people like you guys are young mind like definitely you want to jump into the uh, pool then you can swim and you can come across that okay so that's the reason i'm pulling all those things over here so the data preparation is very important we mentioned business understanding and data understanding what kind of data we want to uh, bring out for this life cycle and the data preparation so how can we are going to prepare the data as i mentioned like removing all other unnecessary uh, data and uh, uh, null values etc etc so many things and modeling and predict uh, modeling so here we are going to apply different types of models like it will be a supervised learnings or unsupervised learning 
or in super sliding there are so many um, so many subdivisions are there so we can go ahead on that and same way for evaluation so after applying that modeling we have to evaluate which model is suit for this specific data analysis the, the data uh, that's your final solution so after that is predicted then you are going to deploy the model on the production right this is a very high level uh, data science life cycle and the same way here the the another representation so how they are doing so they're taking the data from reality and data is processed and then again here they're doing the data cleanup right and they are doing the explanatory data analysis as i mentioned almost 70 to 80 percentage of your work will eaten by this guy okay and then predicting like model designing the modeling and algorithm and then we are going to communicate either the visual reports and uh, final statistical data to the coe or the market then based on the outcome again we can uh, give it to the reality world then from that again we can take the data so you can fine tune the process and stabilize the process i'm telling you guys like the going forward all these at ecom and uh, the websites right nowadays this kind of a recommendation system recommendation is nothing but just they're giving recommendations to you okay better you go ahead with that so the 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 uh, what is that the, the mentality will will be go and pick up the recommendation system so going forward what their plan is like they give some objects some them some, some they give they are offering something you supposed to take that that kind of mentality will come to each and every human being because they are such a way they will clean up your mind they'll uh, they'll sell anything to you nowadays actually they are giving option a option b option c option d but going forward based on this this complete detail analysis they exactly understood what exactly you want what exactly you want okay like the mom right so at home right mom is to prepare the food okay so the guy for example the the guy actually he needs like um, um uh, evening snacks like samosa or whatever it is so it's, he likes very much so his mom get ready prepared before he back to home or school back to home right so in that condition he prepare everything so the same way the mom will prepare the food lunch breakfast right which is very much close to the the kids heart so the same way after certain time every industry will prepare all the all their the products which is very closer to each and individual each and every individual so there is no options it's going to be like a, a a to a b to b that's it just directly they will sell the product to the customer directly because they'll try to find out their mind reading and then they'll they started selling all their product instead of giving the options so those kind of things like the end of the world like it's going to be like finally they'll uh, bring out what exactly the my customers looking there is no any other choice by choice a or choice b no it's just a choice a for my customer a my choice b for customer b choice c for customer c that's it they don't want to display everything on 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 the board so they know what they're exactly and the again other uh, classic example prepare the data engineering features so many uh, like uh, this is nothing but uh, train and tune the model and all those things this is simple data science life cycle so based on that they will stable the system you can compare this data science life the data science life cycle along with your software life cycle software life cycle also is very similar to that and data science is a part of the iit anyway right so so it's very similar to that but it's pretty much simple and uh, for this specific the data science mostly they'll take the data from reality if you go for software development life cycle means mostly they're taking from the requirement from their customer simple any doubts here guys any doubts no sir okay so can we have at least five minutes five to ten minutes break hello sir shall we break for, we have, uh, shall we break uh, yeah or, uh, break for at least. Uh, 10 minutes or uh, yeah 10 minutes yeah 10 minutes please uh, okay sir okay okay, okay. Uh, thank you guys thank yeah. you sir i'll pass my video okay yeah
Thank you. Thank you, sir. important to understand uh, the the subject knowledge i agree with you guys definitely with the 3 to 2 hours or like uh, if you are meeting catching up uh, during the weekends to understand this data science is a big challenge i agree but you guys like to do all your hands on and top of your uh, busy schedule with other subjects so utilize all those things it will really helpful you guys okay i am telling you that right and back to the screen if uh, no doubts in that so probably i can uh, go to the next slide so as we discussed uh, in the previous slide so we a uh, representation of like uh, the one slide story of data science uh, uh, life cycle so just for a picture representation mm -hmm. and you guys so so this is a very simple understanding analogy so why they are doing that so each and every uh, model uh, what we are doing on that like uh, data preparation and the data modeling and the data analysis and then uh, and we are deploying on that and uh, here the important thing why when what the, all those things w format things are we need and uh, again here we need to do the data just one slide i don't want to again uh, reiterate this so quickly, I'm uh, getting into the data science ecosystem and tools. 
So, data science uh, ecosystem and tools. Uh, Madam, I think you have started recording, right? Ah, yes, recording started. Okay, cool. Ah. Okay, so data science ecosystem and tools. So, earlier, right, we have big data ecosystem and tools, all those things. The same way for uh, the data science as well. So we have so many uh, tools and uh, um, what is that? The softwares are required. Okay. So here, so don't confuse yourself. Just I have brought up this one. So just to highlight uh, what are the important things with respect to the data scientist. So since we are going to use uh, Python, so this guy is very, very important. Okay. This guy is very important guy. Okay. So this guy. Okay. This guy is very important guy like uh, the Jupyter notebook. Okay. So the Jupyter notebook actually it's, it's playing a vital role in uh, the most of the uh, data science uh, program. Okay. And uh, or else we can use a data brick as well. Right. And then, uh, uh, so here we have uh, IPy, uh, Python, and on top of that, we have the other environment called uh, PyCharm, something like that. But predominantly, they're using the Jupyter Notebook. So how many of you have heard that Jupyter Notebook? Sir, uh, it's like yes. uh, for running Python codes, mm -hmm. uh, some platform, including Anaconda. Okay, yeah, excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's actually it's like uh, ID that is like uh, an integrated development environment. So by using oh, that, sir. okay. So is that so? Is answering. Kritigaini, is it? Ah, yes, sir. Cool. Very good. Thank you. Thanks, Kritigaini. Okay. So this is like an, uh, the Jupyter notebook. Actually, it's like it it it, it gets, comes along with like uh, the two version. Like it's going to be like uh, internet version or local version. Okay. So I'll I'll show that environment. So hope you other guys may know all those things. Like what is a Jupyter notebook? What we are using for. On top of that, in industrial, so we have a uh, R Studio. If you are going to use uh, R programming language, we can use the R program uh, R Studio, uh, or else like say, O2 something like that. But if when you're using a Python, better you go with Jupyter. No, nothing, no other any recommendation. And uh, so Databrick mostly. Uh, it's very similar to the Jupyter notebook, nothing major difference. But when you're working with Azure environment, so for Azure uh, deployment, so basically people used to have that uh, uh, the data brick and uh, work on this, uh, all that uh, executing all these commands. Okay, so this is nothing but the just very high level, just one single point of things is Jupyter notebook is enough for at, at present for you guys. So let's move on. Okay, so. Okay, so this is Jupyter Notebook uh, is a major uh, IDE. Then uh, we'll see the next slide. So forget about all those things. For Just for understanding, I brought up all those things. Okay. This is very important. Okay. So now coming to our the Python for uh, data science. So we are in this session, actually, we are going to discuss about like what are packages which is relevant to our um, data science perspective and of some basic uh, um, the Python uh, um, programming language perspective and then slowly we'll move into the transition to that uh, statistical uh, model how we are using with Python okay and then uh, so and then uh, how we are going to utilize uh, uh, what is the page uh, for Python uh, and then uh, machine learning perspective. Okay, so let me wipe out my screen. Okay, guys. So guys, it's very important. So here after actually, it's going to be like uh, uh, the mutual understanding. We have to drive the show because the so far what we I discussed like uh, it might be like a compute theoretical uh, theoretical stuff. So the upcoming session is going to be a really really core 
and the programming model so you guys needs to get into the the field and make your hands are dirty otherwise there is no point we are spending uh, the huge time and your professor uh, bringing out uh, this session for your benefit so try to utilize actively okay right good so as we mentioned earlier like there is a way we, we we need go to go with python so python um it is like i don't want to go fancy and geography and social things nothing just to start start let's say directly uh, if i want to say because actually when i started learning my uh, my data science uh, things like uh, i'll start with r programming okay so the r programming is also like uh, the one of the data science um, um, machine learning models what python it's really really amazing thing like the people easily can understand what uh, what uh, they want to do because the programming wise like it's a straight forward just one line statement so if already if you are known that programming language and if you are new to the uh, programming that is very 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 easy to to understand that because you don't want confusing because the the statement like like depicting that uh, this is going to do this one okay so if you know the language programming language problem you may think in diff and uh, you will think okay so why don't we want to use this way that way nothing like that but with respect to the data science point of view some certain things is enough the python application not python application python programming a single shot of files or multiple files but when you are applying their application they are using python that is totally different okay you the you to you try to understand the two main thing if you are using a python for data science perspective the way and approach and execution is is typically different from the way you are developing the application per point of view that's very very important so you must clear about that but if you based on your interest you can more on python top of your uh, data science for python and then um, sorry python for data science and and uh, or else like if you explore more on that python means you can side by develop some application means you can very well go ahead in that track as well but with respect to the python uh, for data science is a simple and straight forward because most of the things is going to be like a well defined steps which you have to follow then follow the step execute the model close the model that's it it's very simple okay don't confuse much so here There is, as I mentioned earlier, like there is no doubt the Python is the best suit for language for data science. That's very important because the very easy, yeah, very, very easy understandable. If you go with the C sharp or uh, C programming or Java programming, it's really big challenge. I'm sure you guys are like know already Java, C plus C plus plus, Fortran, whatever it is. But but when you look at that Python programming, easily you can understand that. I'm sure on that. So the few things why we want to Uh, how the python uh, for data science means this is the first thing is a open source language so nowadays industries is actually they are moving towards the open source languages and then second one simple and powerful so they are telling it's a flexible and powerful how it is for powerful how it is flexible so definitely you come to know when we are for uh, when we are going to towards next and uh, upcoming classes okay in the session so you definitely understood why it is very powerful and probably i'll give a nice examples how it is powerful than the other languages okay based on my experience because when i started doing my uh, the fox row uh, in the late 90s so uh, really like it's like read write statement and uh, uh, live loop statement and then uh, control statement so many things are there okay so after that i moved into the, the um, i learned the c c++ and moved into visual basic and dot net and so on so it it everything have some unique uh, uh, what is a comparison and unique uh, difference right unique uh, was common com common culture is there so the same way when i look at it like i really very much interested and impressed so i love that python to do lorc and even that might be like a main reason for myself i should love the python very much so for you guys i'm sure 
so your young mind you guys definitely so there are so many um uh, things are that it's a simple wise session tags and readable and easy to perform the data manipulation analysis so if you look at the, the c all this interpretation uh, of using c++ is a really challenge okay interpretation and guys actually um, you, uh, the, the r programming um uh, and then python programming even for r programming r programming earlier they used really for scientific purpose right how many of you know that matlab matlab software how many of you know that matlab software yes sir yeah you know that what is that uh, yes sir uh, sir you for know doing the uh, signal processing uh, things and for image processing we can use that software mm. uh, it's pretty easy to use because uh, that matrix laboratory actually it's perform and uh, uh, by taking the matrix mm. it's very easy to uh, calculate the things mm. in that so it's a really mm. useful software mm. excellent excellent yeah so earlier days actually to do the all the mathematical so scientific and mathematical related things you want to implement in any any project so the mostly the r and d mostly in the r and d actually they have started using most of the times they use like matlab and sas programming and on or programming and earlier to that s programming is also there s programming is nothing but statistical programming so the the s programming consists of all these statistical related formulas and methodologies and applied statistics all the um, all other uh, relevant to the statistical methods they have built all the libraries and started using uh in uh, statistical domain okay then evaluation of that uh, s programming is nothing but r programming in the r programming itself there are so many things but if you looking for back to like around 2017 16 and 15 and all uh, there was pro- the r programming it's like uh, well versed work for data science but after the python implementing uh, the ecosystem now we, you guys are looking at the slide in um, um what is that the python uh, ecosystem okay in this python ecosystem look at here this is very very important as i mentioned earlier numpy so i'm planning to bring up this few examples and at least a 30 to 40 minutes to i will discuss about the python probably next session so so that you can understand what exactly the python as a numpy under the python so the same way scikit-learn the scikit learn is nothing but the science kit to learning it has so many libraries and models and classes and functions is providing to do your all your uh, data science analysis for algorithm machine learning algorithm implementation okay and same by science pi this is a scientific uh, python actually now it's like combined with the uh, uh, socket line then um, so you can do all the your uh, um machine learning algorithms and same way so i get images if you want to develop any images so you can use this one so i'm not sure about this i never use this one and the keras keras is nothing but actually it's is another version of tensor flow tensor flow like uh, as uh, my friend uh, amelia has mentioned right uh, that image processing uh, by using what is that uh, matlab so the python come up with the uh, the libraries and package keras and tensor flow to analyze the image uh, processing and uh, uh, voice audio and video recognition and then uh, um, natural language processing perspective they have started using the keras it's a very leading and very advanced model when you are playing with the python okay and here the environment as i mentioned earlier jupiter okay so the kritika ayn is mentioned like jupiter she is using for like running the application in python yes this is one of the fantastic environment id these two people used to call this is id id is nothing but integrated development environment this is a browser based guys this is a browser based actually nowadays actually most of the applications are browser based but i used earlier pycharm pycharm is like just uh, um uh, windows based one so it's like uh, just like your uh, c sharp application uh, installing your uh, in your uh, desktop you can work on that but by uh, jupiter also same same version but it's like a browser based one and we have a jupiter as well i'll show that uh, the, what are the ids are available under the anaconda anaconda 
don't panic on that because the name itself like uh, so since it's like a python right so they started uh, bringing this all the combination in the under one number law in anaconda software so once you install the anaconda so you can use either spider or jupiter notebook or else and we can have other features as well but i never using all those things but i only one just jupiter i'm using and the data visualization perspective the mat uh, mat plot lib and seaborn uh, and the plot toy all this visualization uh, perspective we are using uh, the environment and then the data management perspective so we have pandas uh, the other things even uh, yeah sql uh, alchemist and network excel i never used this one okay and blast as well i never used okay but even for the uh, the training purpose we don't want to use all those things but the for data management yes of course pandas is very important and numpy yes of course we need that and then uh, your uh, socket land is very important and matplotlib and seaborn these are very very important uh, ecosystems which is required when you are doing your data science at initial level at initial level that's very important okay so if you're moving to the advanced version there are so many things are there even i am not aware of all those things because in the industries every day and they are releasing new model new libraries new features but some standard things are there so you can use those things that's different issue right so if the pyco is a python data science for Uh, python for data science ecosystem this is pandas yes this is for mostly for data warehousing interaction and uh, matlab sorry matplotlib and seaborn numpy obviously and then uh, science kit learn that's it so all the three things like 1 2 3 4 5 6 the major five major things like it's playing around uh, our data science to create a simple model and predict that that's a very very basic important okay so the upcoming session we are going to see like what exactly the each an individual then we we'll slowly move to the program any doubts here any questions guys any questions Uh, no sir okay cool right so then i want to install my anaconda means like so what you can do like just you you must have the anaconda in your uh, laptop okay so or desktop whatever it is so the next upcoming session i'm planning to give some um, some hands on for you guys so try to do that and uh, we are planning to bring up some assignment for you guys okay so that that's some mandatory things like probably your madam will like explain uh, so uh, what is that the score and everything so she will explain everything for you guys don't worry about that but going forward you must have anaconda should install in your laptop that's very very important make sure that okay so next class when i come to uh, when we will connect then my first question would be whether you guys are installed anaconda in your laptop or not if it's already been installed in your laptop that's well and good but if not please try to install the site forward so install that and get ready uh, for do your hands on on your own stuff everything okay right let me share my environment so let me share so that you can so just i'm sh stop sharing and uh, So they have like there is a knowledge. So probably going forward, like people, you you people can jump in and do that. So there is a community. I don't want to go in tie in detail. So coming back to the Jupiter, um, that's the home. So now I'm going to launch my Jupiter notebook. So let me share my Jupiter notebook, uh, guys. So once you click this one. like launching notebook 
and your progress bar will keep on um, rolling around here and then uh, your internet explorer will will jump and will show the screen i'll share my screen again okay i'm stopping sharing and sharing the other one new share new share is my this one You guys are able to see yes sir you able to see okay cool so you'll be able to see my screen right so once you get installed the jupyter node uh, anaconda then when you click on that uh, the launch your uh, jupyter notebook then the system will pop up this window make sure that you have this window so these are already existing uh, the folders uh, well, comes along with your installation so you guys can create your new your own um, folder okay so here just very simple here is uh, running in the local host triple eight nine slash three okay so this is very important local host and as i mentioned earlier uh, the jupyter notebook is nothing but it's, it's a uh, browser based version and here we have we can upload the files and create a new folder a new python file something like that so here what i'm going to do i'm going to create a new folder for you guys it's a straightforward simple not a big deal here the just make it back so untitled folder folder and i'm going to change this one the Raja college of engineering and madurai okay i'm making like this right cool so my folder is ready so where is my folder here so now the folder is empty i've created a folder then i'm going to create my new file python so python 3.7 i think we are working okay there's a the latest version and go beyond go beyond like back version because actually if you are planning to implement any new versions like that won't support okay so make sure you guys are uh, with uh, the python 3 that's very important so that's the reason i mentioned like go and install anagonda and minigonda whatever the things you are in one installed straight forward so once you click this one new and python 3 so it started uh, creating a new tab for you guys so that you can go and create a um, just wait guys actually here i'm just waiting for response okay but i'll show the others others other uh, page so that uh, we can quickly have a view and then we can move so this is my okay, and this is my so probably people already know the jupyter notebook so so people can understand what uh, available available menu so here we have a uh, uh, file menu edit and view and insert kernel see guys actually this is very important thing actually when you are running your application if you are uh, running your application it started connecting connecting with your the kernel and don't don't think too much about this all those things okay this is like uh, is available in uh, uh, c programming as well but we never think about like we're running all this kernel and all but uh, whenever is tracking with something okay so if, you, if the things are not working properly so you can uh, not trusted so if you connect if you click on this one so not trusted uh, give that so I, I don't know some some problem in it connected okay so this is a basic uh, the environment and you can run the program by using a run command button so this is going to be so that python and like so we know what uh, we understood what is a jupyter notebook and we have a very basic uh, the functionalities are like uh, running our application and uh, adding that uh. so now as i mentioned here here like the python and key packages for uh, distributions complete uh, package distribution so um, 
So here we have, I, I mentioned here, Pandas and NumPy and uh, Scikit-Learn and MATLAB and SciencePy. So the most of the 25 percentage of percentage we are we every um, that uh, data science specific application uh, using the Pandas library. Without Pandas, definitely we cannot do anything on your uh, um, data science of uh, even not even even a simple file because if you want to input any csv file or if, if you want to connect with any database the pandas library is very very important okay and numpy and to do the all the manipulations certainly it's required certainly like i would say this is the three things are the major key heroes when you're doing with your um uh, data science uh, applications and uh, science get uh, learning 70 to 80 percentage of um, uh, what is that the libraries it's really really helpful to build all your uh, machine learning models and then for pictorious pers uh, visualization perspective so we supposed to import matlib uh, matplotlib library and it is going to be almost 20 to 25 percentage of uh, the uh, the requirements in your in your what in your uh, application okay so hope you guys understood what is a package that's the reason i put up this diagram so package is nothing but individual set of files okay so it comes along with the package so don't think too much what are the files are available in say the pandas and what are the available files are available in numpy forget about that just you want to make sure you know when to use Py, uh, pandas when to use numpy and when to use uh, learn uh, scikit learn and then when to use matlab matplotlab that's a very important thing forgot about the number of files this picture just for your understanding i have i have uh, come uh, given here just for understanding pers perspective okay so what is the package package is nothing but a collection of files simple okay so forget about don't think don't get into the pandas uh, uh, package and uh, finding like how many files are there what are the files are there that is not our headache it's everything's available just go and take and use that okay just i'm going to show just only the few slides just two slides pandas and numpy and rest of things probably we can connect uh, by next week and go ahead is that fine ma'am it's already too late for you guys right it's going to be six o'clock ah uh, yeah oh uh, we'll wind up now and we'll connect uh, next week saturday yeah okay. okay so i'll wind up now because actually if i get into that the in detail of the pandas numpy means like it's uh, completely uh, uh, disconnected so keep it in mind data science life cycle and what are the key packages for data science uh, implementation that's very important thing so probably like uh, i'll planning to create a, some sort of small assignment for you guys i'll share with ma'am so the ma'am will distribute you guys so uh, get the answer and uh, so probably if you have any queries and questions and clarifications we will catch up by next week okay so i think uh, already we exhausted so I'm sure next week what I will do, I'll clean up my laptop and uh, uh, internet connection should be fine, I guess. So because of that, I'm not able to showcase a couple of videos today. I'm struggling on that. Anyway, I'll share the link. Okay, guys, any doubts? Any doubts? No, sir. Okay, so anybody else? So no, we sir. have around 60 people, right? So all are fine. Okay, guys, just go through that. So probably I'll share the slides uh, with ma'am. So ma'am will share all those things and I'm planning to prepare uh, some uh, short uh, uh, notes perspective as well. So I'll, uh, I'll share with ma'am. So so just utilize that and uh, make up to speed. So upcoming days is going to be a very challenge because once we jump into the coding, then we cannot go back to the slides. So most of the time we're playing around only with the um, Jupyter um, notebook only. Okay.